Rapamycin extends lifespan, and that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got survival plotted against age in days. And in this study, rapamycin was started at midlife, approximately 600 days. And then when looking at median lifespan, that's the time when half the colony has died and half is still alive, we can see that significant extension for median lifespan, and this is in male mice. Uh, this effect is also true in female mice. I covered that in an earlier video, and if you missed it, it'll be in the right corner. One mechanism for how rapamycin impacts lifespan involves inhibition of mTOR complex 1 or mTORC1. And we can see that here on this relatively short list of mTORC1 inhibitors, rapamycin is there. Now, inhibiting mTORC1 during aging is potentially important because when mTORC1 is hyperactive, we can see that it negatively impacts the health or function of many organ systems, including hypertension or high blood pressure, obesity, dyslipide dyslipidemia, high blood lipids, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, neurodegeneration, cancer, and so on. So with that in mind, that raises the question, are there blood biomarkers of mTORC1 activity? So when mTORC1 is active, there is an increased phosphorylation of P70S6K, as shown here with that little phosphorylation group there, or PO4. So now we can get more specific with our question of blood biomarkers of mTORC1 activity. Are any blood biomarkers related to phosphorylated levels of P70S6K? And there is homocysteine. Homocysteine activates mTORC1. And that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got relative protein levels of phosphorylated levels of P70S6K plotted against the homocysteine con concentration on the x-axis. And as the levels of homocysteine increase, we can see relatively higher levels of phosphorylated P70S6K. In other words, homocysteine activates mTORC1. Now that's important because homocysteine increases during aging. And that's what we can see here. So on the y-axis, we've got plasma levels of total homocysteine plotted against age from 12 to older than 80 years old. And for both males and females, we see that age-related increase for homocysteine. Now, similarly, my homocysteine levels have increased during aging too. And this is data going back to 2005 through to, uh, 2023. I have 31 blood tests for homocysteine over that time span. And note that for some of the data on the right, I've supplemented with folate, B6, B12, uh, trimethylglycine, also known as betaine, but yet we can still see that significant age-related increase for homocysteine. Now, on the left, I didn't show what happens to homocysteine to people older than 80 years old, and that's what we can see here. In this study of more than 1,700 centenarians, so these people had a median age of 100 years, we can see that serum levels of homocysteine were almost double what they are on the chart above it, 23.1 micromolar. Now, the centenarian data actually argues against the role of homocysteine on longevity. In other words, it suggests that high homocysteine and potentially mTORC1 activation doesn't limit lifespan. But when considering that mTORC1 is associated with a whole bunch of adverse health-related conditions, would centenarian health be better with lower homocysteine and correspondingly less mTORC1 activation? So with that in mind, uh, what I commonly hear is that reducing homocysteine should be easy, just add folate, B12, and or trimethylglycine. So let's take a look at why I don't think that's the best strategy if the goal is longevity. And to do that, let's take a look at homocysteine metabolism. So dietary folic acid or dietary folate will be converted to serum folate, and then the, in the presence of vitamin B12, will convert homocysteine into methionine. So it's true that folate and B12 will result in a homocysteine lowering effect, thereby increasing methionine. Similarly, betaine or trimethylglycine, and note that choline also feeds into the betaine pathway, will combine with homocysteine to also uh, form methionine. So folate, B12, and or trimethylglycine all should be able to reduce homocysteine, but will get an increase in methionine. And that may not be good for longevity because as we know from the animal studies, methionine restriction, not an increase in methionine, extends lifespan. Also, in human data, plasma levels of methionine in centenarians, so these, these are people that had an average age of 97 years, were uh, significantly lower when compared with their offspring who had an average age of 67 years. And note that this paper and all the papers in the video will be in the video's description. So centenarians had a significantly lower average value of plasma methionine when compared with the younger age group, people that were 30 years younger. And now note that there are no error bars on this chart which weren't reported in the paper, supplementary table six for whatever reason, but the average levels were significantly different based on how they were reported in the paper. So nonetheless, centenarians in the study had relatively lower levels of plasma methionine when compared with people that were 30 years younger. 
Now, a, 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 an approach that I think may be better is using serine, the amino acid serine plus B6 to reduce homocysteine, which would convert it into cystathionine. Cystathionine in the presence of B6 will then be converted into the amino acid cysteine, which can then be incorporated into GSH, which is glutathione. And if you're familiar with this channel, you know that glutathione extends lifespan. And it, in a couple of randomized controlled trials, glutathione restoration improves a whole bunch of health-related outcomes. So having relatively higher glutathione during aging may be a good thing. And then another metabolite that uh, is making its first appearance on this channel H2S, hydrogen sulfide. And why that may be important is because hydrogen sulfide may be able to act as a sulfur donor. Note the S there. And if it can act as a sulfur donor, I would expect that I should be able to get an increased conversion of DHEA into DHEA sulfate. And if you're also familiar, familiar with the channel, you know that my DHEA sulfate levels are not youthful. They're relatively aged. So with that in mind, the goal for the next test, until the next test, is to supplement with serine plus vitamin B6, two grams of serine per day, five milligrams of vitamin B6 per day. And I think that that may be able to reduce homocysteine and potentially increase DHEA sulfate. Now note that these are relatively low doses because I only want to impact homocysteine and or DHEA sulfate. I don't want to mess up anything else. So the question is, will it work? So for that, uh, my next blood test will be in a few weeks, sometime in mid to late April. And then if it doesn't work, the plan is to potentially go higher to double the serine and double the vitamin B6 intake for test number four in 2023. But I should note that that assumes that two grams of serine and five milligrams of B6 won't send my biomarkers in crazy directions. I, I don't know if that's true or not. We'll have to see how the data looks. Now, as a last note here, note that B6 is also involved in new synthesis, de novo synthesis of NAD. Uh, and if, it's, if B6 is deficient, I would expect to have relatively lower levels of NAD. So then that raises the question, will having relatively higher B6, I'll have more than double compared with without supplementation, will that inc uh, impact my intracellular levels of NAD without supplementing with niacin, NMN, or NR? And I've got some NAD quantification kits coming, so I'll have results for that sometime in the next few weeks. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount link for NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.